Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. It's time for the Bonnie Share Show, a whirlwind of wit, wisdom, celebrity, and the boomer life. With a little bit of this and a lot of that, and so much more you don't want to miss, here's Bonnie! And hello and thank you. Friends, old and new, for tuning in, calling in, and joining the conversation. Um, first of all, a thank you to Wayne Cobham for our super duper theme song. Um, I am Bonnie Cher, and I am your host through the world of celebrity, through the great boomer generation, and the world of type 1 diabetes. Uh, pardon me. Today's guests are... Wow, I'm so excited. I got a little goosebumps here. R&B and funk diva Spanky Wilson is here with me today. <laughs> and I also have Mr. John Conrad from the T1D community. If you have a question or you have a comment, I invite you to please call in. And that number is 323 no, it is not. It is 8432826. Try that again, Bonnie. 323 for <laughs> There should be a 4 in there apparently, but there's not. The real number is and I'm going to read it. It's 323843 Or you can follow the hashtag as hashtag BSHER radio on Twitter. So uh, why don't you settle in, and let's say hello to my very first guest, Miss Spanky Wilson. Well, hello, Spanky, and thank you for joining us today. What's up, woman? Mm, it's such a pleasure to be here. You, t What are you talking about? I love it already. <laughs> well, that that's the point. We want you not to. To hate it, oh, okay. it will not. It will not hurt. I promise. Now, um, I've listened to your music. Um, I think I always, in a way, wanted to be you, but you're already you, so there's no room for me to be you. Tell me, what was it like? I know you tell me you grew up in Philadelphia. No, I grew up in Pittsburgh. I was uh, born in Philadelphia. It was one of those pea places in yeah, the state and of in the Pennsylvania. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so wherever you grew up, uh, <laughs> what got you into singing? Well, my father sang and played the guitar. So in uh, he used to play music after it, after he'd uh, get home from work, and we'd sit on the steps in Philadelphia. And uh, he'd teach me all of these beautiful songs. My mother said I was singing before I could actually talk, you know, <laughs> trying to keep up with my dad. But then when they broke up, I, we left and went to Pittsburgh. And uh, just, I knew what I was going to be, I think, when I was four. I Isn't recorded, it? yeah. I knew I, what I wanted to be. That's I amazing. recorded my first record with my father when we were, when I was, I think, four years old. You could go in the st in the in the music shop, right, right. And, and nobody believes me when I tell this story because they said I've never heard of that. But in Philadelphia, you could actually go in a music store where you bought cheap music or the latest seventy eight, and we pay some money and we would go in the studio and we get a seventy eight going with two sides, and we record it and we go home with a record. And after I began singing professionally, I asked my father, Dad, where's the record that we made? He said, oh, baby, I don't know where that, you know, I mean, I would love to 
to have heard that, you know. <laughs> and could, never did find it. Never huh? did find it. But that's, I knew what I wanted to be when I was four. Uh, um, interestingly, I, I totally relate to that because I was the same way. And oh. I was about, I was right around that same age, yeah. at four or five, yeah. thank. And um, I walked around with my three albums that were my life. There was Sammy Swings on the okay. Deca label, okay. uh, Judy Garland, uh -huh. and The Sound of Music oh, had just okay. been released. So Whoa. that was my life. But I also knew. Um, so let me ask you this. Knowing that, knowing mm -hmm. what was in store for you and mm -hmm. what your path, do you th did you ever think, maybe I should have learn to type i always think that no because then never. i could have gotten a job that pays benefits but i can't type so i never had those jobs so i had to go into show business do you are you ever sorry that this is the life oh, you should... no, <laughs> uh, no even when we're out of work I, I and... say, yes I, I you know i thank the lord i said lord i guess i'm a taurus and i tend to have a temper you know I, i'm really a nice person but please don't don't take me off. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, don't start anything because I will finish it. You know, that kind of thing. And I said, I guess the Lord said, "I better give this girl a voice because I wouldn't be able to have a boss." <laughs> you know, that that was out of the question. You know, taking orders is not my best. No, not the best not, event that no, you have. No, no. 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 <laughs> I also seem to have a case of that, uh, <laughs> which is why I do my own show because who would hire me? <laughs> Yeah, we have yeah. something in common. I, I think we have a number of things in common, and I'm not even a Taurus, although I've been called a lot worse. Oh, okay. Um, so what now, what keeps you motivated, and what do you look for in your day? Do you keep a lot of music around you still? Are you interested in, what do you want to do today? Oh, every day I want to hear some music or I'm trying to look up and find another song that I like, that I would like to sing. And, because you have to change your repertoire every so often, you know. Although I still do the standards that people like, but I'm always looking for, for different songs. Well, I think there's a good reason for that. I believe that old songs are like old friends. Oh, boy. And even if an audience comes in who doesn't really know what your work is like or who you are. Maybe mm -hmm. they're seeing you for the first time. They know that song, and there's already a familiarity. You know, so it's not like such a cold first time of. Um, exactly. We talked before we went on air about both of us having mm -hmm. to work, having worked for Mr. Davis, mm -hmm. and one of the lessons that he taught me was that um, there's a reason that some songs are obscure, don't mm -hmm. sing them. Mm -hmm. They were bad songs. Yeah. Yeah, because I've gone to shows myself where there's nothing but a litany of things I've never heard before. And to me, you know, it's kind of hosey humsy, but I think no matter who the act is, it brings you closer. Mm -hmm. It's like that's something that you have in common right off the bat. Yeah, band. that's true. Yeah. That's so true. I dumped the the rest of them I couldn't remember the lyrics to anyway. So, <laughs> um, who do you work with here in town? Do you have your posse? Do you yeah, have... I have my posse. I I work with. Well, I just got back to Los Angeles. I've been gone for six years. I went to back to Pittsburgh, and I was stayed for six years, so just came back. Well, welcome so back. I'm getting, Am I glad? <laughs> so I'm getting my posse back together, but my bassist, he's like my son. His name is Ryan Cross. And then uh, there's Lewis Taylor, and we have different drummers, but I used to have Raymond Pounds, who was in, in Cameron Clayton, Clayton Cameron, I mean, really good musicians. So now I'm trying to... Uh, Look for some stuff, different things to do, and we're gonna start rehearsing and get out there and do my thing. I, well, I, you gotta I let have me to know. Sing. Yeah. I definitely will. Yeah, no, you let me know for a couple of reasons. One's, of course, as I will shout it out, but yeah. number two, you will be seeing this face <laughs> in your house, <laughs> well, and I do great. show up, and you'll see me. Oh, speaking of my intern is here. Yay! Hello there. Yeah, now we have the intern. Are you taking lots of pretty pictures? Yeah. <laughs> Good. 
Here, you want to grab my... Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. I know we're doing a show here, but he's part of the show. Um, and also, there's uh, my daughter. I have a daughter who's a Broadway performer. Her oh, yeah. name is Angela Teak. Yeah. And when I came back from Paris, because I lived in Paris for 16 years, when I came back from Paris Who's in 2001, supposed? she talked me into her. Judy Garland was like her, oh, everything, you know. And uh, you, when you said that, it made me think of my daughter right away. And uh, she talked me into doing this show of mother and daughter because when I came back from Paris, all of a sudden I moved in with her. She had a two-bedroom apartment until I found something else. And all of a sudden, she said, well, Mother, if you're going to be late tonight, could you, give me, <laughs> could you give me a call? And I'm saying, well, oh, you better put on a sweater, Mother. It's going to be kind of cold. You know. Finally, I said, hey, girl, I'm the mama. Right. Me, when, when did this? I'm um... the mama. You're the kid. All of a sudden, you're my mother. You know. So she talked me into doing this show with her uh, in the theater. And it was good. We named it, Hey, I'm the Mama. I love because that. it, girl, it is so funny, and because we argue all the time. She's an heiress, and I'm a Taurus, you know. And she knows everything, you know. <laughs> and so we, she finally <laughs> talked me into doing this, and I was saying, oh no, I don't. Then just the thought of the theater frightened me, or something, you know. I'm mean, used to bars and you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. people talking and drinking and you know. And so it, finally, I agreed to do it, and it was so much fun because we talked about how. Did you I do got, it here? We did it here for six weeks wow. uh, back in 2005. We got we won NACP award. It just talks about how I got started and what I came from in Pittsburgh and the husbands I kicked out because I didn't want to have any more babies. You know, I wanted to be a singer, and so then she starts talking about how she admired me. And I'm singing jazz, and she's singing Broadway. So it's like, so we, we're going to start that again. I was just going to say. Yeah, we have a day. I would love to see that mountain. It is, it's so funny, and a lot of. Um, is it just the two of you in the cast? It's just the two of us, yeah. Perfect. It's just two, and, and she tells her story, and I tell mine. And, and, and then we have a quartet. The mus musicians, but it's just. Do you have any idea where you want to do? Well, uh, she's got a date for us already in February. Um, it's at. Well, she told me well, it's a repertory theater, but it's in San Diego, and it's February twenty sixth and twenty seventh. Where's my purse? Because I had to. My I, memory. I took it. My memory. <laughs> my memory is gone. <laughs> Apparently, so is your purse. <laughs> no, here it is. Oh, I was going to say we, it, we'll give it back to you yeah, before you thank, leave the thank studio. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but so and I enjoyed that so much. But, you know, and it, it's, so I'm looking forward to doing that again. And well, all you know that I will stay on this, <laughs> and I will give you plenty of notice, and we will follow and find out. How you can get tickets and get down to San Diego, well, that's up to you. But I can get you to the theater and tell you where Spanky's and her daughter will be. Yeah, I'm going to find it before but, the show is over. You know, I have that with my son also. Really? You know, now that he's a married man oh. and he's a dad. Yeah. Now he's the father? Oh, yeah. So he's now a dad. Yeah. And um, <laughs> he and his wife apparently are the first people ever to have had children. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I had to say to him one day, Danny, somebody fed you yeah. something yeah. sometime. You know, all the things that you think I did wrong. Well, I got up. The only time in my life I was able to get up early because I had to. Mm -hmm. You know, I would do a gig at night mm -hmm. and I wouldn't party afterwards. I'd run back yeah. home so I could wake up and take... He doesn't know about that. <laughs> he doesn't know about that. And the difference, see, they don't tell you about this in the Mother's Club handbook. Mm -hmm. I understand that it's different with daughters when you're the mother. I'm talking yeah. about the mother, daughter, mother, son. Yeah. And then, I mean, because I know that he was, first of all, I was a single parent. And he was my little buddy. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, there was a song from the Broadway musical Golden Rainbow. Mm -hmm. um, and the song is called Kid. 
kid, kid, you're nothing but a kid, yeah. but something deep inside seems to understand me, kid. I sang that to him. Yeah. Now I can't make him sit in the room with me. I, wa- <laughs> I still want to lay all these kudos on him, but no, he's being somebody's dad now. Yeah. And yeah. He doesn't really need my advice. Mm-hmm. Anymore. But much like your daughter, don't confuse him. He's already right. Oh, and yes. I've learned that as long as I make my focus that, we have no problems. Yeah. Yeah, see, she, because she's a, a, a very good vocal coach also. And uh, recovering from, from, uh, from cancer, I, I, I had a problem with my voice. And so when I was feeling well enough to try to, to do vocalize a little yes. bit, she kept saying, Mom, you have to do something because your vocal cords are like a muscle, and if you don't use them. You lose them. So when I felt there, she is right there. Oops, that was me just hitting myself. That's her. <laughs> Boy, those yeah. two beautiful women. And um, so she uh, made me vocal, vocalize a little when I felt well enough to do it. And, and I went to a throat specialist after, and he told me it, it was a good thing that I did because, you know, the king. Yeah, your daughter's name sounds very familiar to me. I'm well, gonna... she won the, the Star Search with the original Star Search in 1989 or 90. Well, that's how I had. I'll tell you. She won 10 weeks straight. (laughs) I'll tell you. I had a limousine company in those days, Mm -hmm. and it was Bob Banner Productions, and they hired my company to run the two celebrities per show because I was there when Brad Garrett won. It was that I, I had the contract all the way through, and that's how I know the name. Well, you know this the guy you just mentioned, my Bob daughter's. Banner. Yeah, he was just at this at this club in uh, in uh, Palm Springs. I forget the name of it, but my daughter's going to be there uh, this Saturday, and he was just on on uh, there last weekend. And I remembered the name just from you mentioning it. So, yeah. Oh, Brad. So, yeah, he was he was there last week. He was there last week. I used to uh, a friend of mine managed him. And, um, I mean, I'm not little, but next to Brad Garrett, Mm -hmm. I look like... Oh, really? And I used to, (laughs) when I would see him, I didn't know if I should shake his hand or climb up him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, But it was amazing times. I mean, that was a great show. Um, Yeah, nothing like the ones they have now. It's it's too many. I mean, it's... Well, listen, it's, it's quote, reality TV. And you can thank the writers who went on strike years ago because that was the birth of reality TV. And I don't know about the rest of y'all, but... I have enough reality every yeah, day in my own life. I don't know that I really need to that's watch what it I all say. night, too. That's what I say. Um, but the difference being with the reality shows that are the music shows, of course, I love that mm-hmm. because I love to look at young, new talent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and they're yeah. coming up with us, yeah. and I, I enjoy that. Whereas the majority of reality TV is people behaving badly. Mm-hmm. And I'm still stuck trying to fit i mean are we are we trying to gauge how how bad we our own selves and our own lives are and say oh i'm not that bad or it's really a good thing that i don't have any money or it's just fun being ignorant (laughs) and that's what it is it is pure ignorance but not on this show and not with uh, you uh, miss Becky. no way and my (laughs) promise is to keep all of my viewers and listeners advised appraised and know what's happening with spanky spanky i can't thank you enough thank you for having me girl oh thank please you. come back anytime how can my listeners follow you how do they find out what's going on in the life of ms wilson well i'm, I'm on facebook rudy put me on facebook i'm not very technically inclined no so <laughs> <laughs> so i'm on facebook and uh I guess some of the things are that are on the online, you know, like base. Uh, what is this? Uh, the Google and different things like that. But you know, I didn't do any of that. So <laughs> all of that. Can you imagine the Google is now? I mean, you think Google? Yeah. Google. <laughs> it's just a Google pie. I used to say that about tweeting. I'll never tweet. Yeah. Um, but I did, and I do. 
Oh, you do? Oh, oh I do. Okay. I'm a, I, I, yeah, I'm a little tweetologist now. Oh, okay. Uh, it's, I cover a lot of territory in this job, and oh, I've okay. had to learn to do a lot of things. Well, that's good. It but what good. I enjoy I have... most about this job are these moments right here where somebody whom I've never known, I've never met, and I feel like you and I have led lives parallel, yeah. and and here we are, yeah, here and, we are. and right. we're still here. And, and what, girl, I love that song. Did you have you heard that song? What is her name that, that recorded in in a film? And she was sitting on top of the piano. Oh, the song is "But I'm Here." But I'm still here. And um, it's had a couple of incarnations. Oh, um, has it? Yeah. Um, but I love, a, I love it. I love it. I love this well, song. Well, the statement because, is yeah, a great statement. statement. Yeah. 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 So, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Miss Wilson one more time. <laughs> Um, you are listening. <laughs> I'm back now. I got so excited. You're listening to the Bonnie Share Show. Please join our conversation. You can call 323-843-2826 or please follow the hashtag. That's hashtag B-S-H-E-R radio on Twitter. Coming up will be a shout out from my soapbox and that's my take on who got it right and who got it terribly wrong and should truly be ashamed of themselves um but first i'd like to go to break with a wonderful song that uh, what a surprise recorded by miss Finky wilson and it's called you are the sunshine of my life take it away
Well, that got me all worked up. That was amazing. Uh, welcome back to the Bonnie Share Show. And joining me in this segment is John Conrad, um, a member of the T1D community from the great state of California, or living here in the great state. I don't know if you're actually from. I don't know if anybody's other than my kid is actually from California. I think we all roll down the continental axis. But in the meantime, please, everybody, say hello to John Conrad. It's nice to see you. Thank you for deciding to be my T1 co-host today, John. I really appreciate it. It is my pleasure, and I'm honored. And by the way, I'm a naturalized Californian, having lived here for more than 50 years, but my daughter is definitely uh, Bay Area. She was born in San Francisco. Well, there you have it. Yeah, my, my kid was born here also, um, which is why he doesn't have, I don't know, he's got blue eyes or brownish blue. I don't know. I don't even know why I said that to you. But, but, what I want to know, John, we all know that you've been living with T1, um, I believe, 46 years. Am I correct? 40, literally 46 years this November, uh, just before Thanksgiving. I oh, spent, well, you're uh, a neophyte. I've got 49. <laughs> so, yes, we were we were at that same time when we boiled little p pills and watched them turn colors. And they got really hot, too. <laughs> didn't they, though? Or um, when you would have to collect the urine samples and take them to your doctor and you'd you know, be really good about it. And then as you would get into the parking lot, well, you'd drop the urine samples. You know, and what, what are you going to do? You can't cry over spilt urine. Uh, but I remember I, those, <clears throat> those I, days. I, I haven't done that, but I do remember that when control was reasonably good for those times, to get an accurate urine sample, you were supposed to double void. <laughs> How can you pee again in 20 minutes after you just emptied your bladder, even after a gallon of water? <laughs> uh, well, if you have a high enough blood glucose, I see that's the bad part. Because if you can do it, then it's a problem. You know, <laughs> if you're having more trouble. Anyway, um, we, before we go on with the analysis of your analysis. Um, tell us your story. How have you, how have you done this for 46 years? And I must say, you look great. You don't look like you've been beat up too much. Tell us your story, John. Yeah, I, <clears throat> I'll, I'll try to kind of synopsize it because I know our time is a little bit limited. But uh, early in 1970, maybe actually early summer, I got a very low-grade virus. Had practically no symptoms, no sore throat, no runny nose, nothing like that. I just felt kind of yucky. So it went away, and then about a week later, it came back again. Went away, about a week later, it came back again. So I went to see the doctor. He said, you got a low-grade virus. Couldn't figure out what it was, and not that much was known about viruses in 1970. So then it continued on for two months. I started losing weight. And I started urinating a little frequently called polyuria. So at that time, he said, go to the local drugstore. I was living in marvelous Mill Valley at the time. And they had the little strip. little tear-off strip from the envelope, stuck it in the envelope with your doctor's name, and they sent the results to your doctor. Well, that test was negative, so they ruled out diabetes. Another month went Did, were by. Were they using this, scotch tape? I mean, how did that come back negative? No, it was a little chemically coated I strip remember that those. was a tear-off flap on the envelope. <laughs> Somebody must and do you it. Had to, you just had to dip it, let it dry, stick it in the envelope, put a doctor's information, and then wait for the result. To be inaccurate. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that was with the accuracy of a dip strip urine test of the time, <laughs> which we know was notoriously inaccurate. 
So anyway, uh, things went on. They thought I had all sorts of great, great things like Bright's disease or some other non-disclosed uh, critical illness for which they had no treatment. So uh, the doctor called me and scheduled an urgent appointment for the next day. Next morning, uh, got up and I had a call from the doctor and he said, uh, you know what? I'm kind of concerned. I'd like you to go to Marin General Hospital and have them do it there at the hospital lab in case there's any issues. So they started a glucose tolerance test. It's supposed to take four hours. Mm -hmm. After one hour, they stopped, cut it off, and sent me up to um, admitting for the um, ICU. My blood sugar after only one hour was over 900. I had severe ketoacidosis. I can imagine. I was critically dehydrated. I was at that time, I'm, I'm still slender, but it was extremely slender at the time. And I went from like about 135 pounds to under 110. And I remember a funny aspect of it, because I found it's really good to have humor when you're writing the... Uh, my skin while waiting for them to do another blood draw and uh -huh. so forth. And my skin would stay puckered up like a rubber chicken that had come partially deflated. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's that first telltale sign. When yeah, you can pinch. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, in, in a way, it was kind of good news. One, it was a relief to find out they had something they could actually diagnose and treat. Um, they started me on IV uh, glucose, uh, I mean, uh, saline drip with uh, U40R insulin. And they kept upping the dose and taking hourly blood draws and sent them down to the lab and sending them back again. And after two days... I felt literally like I had been reborn. Well, I've noticed that during a day, haven't you? <laughs> you know, yeah, anyway. definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so anyway, to kind of summarize the hospitalization, in a way I was kind of fortunate because of an unfortunate incident at the hospital. The year before, they had lost a teenage patient who came in and was misdiagnosed, went into DKA, and died. Mm -hmm. What that meant for me is they pulled out all the stops. I had the head nurse of the ICU check on me about every 15 to 20 minutes. I had their equivalent of a diabetes nurse educator, which, which was just a, uh, a, a special nurse that had some supplementary training because mm -hmm. there was no such certification then. I had the resident endocrinologist metabologist. I had a uh, couple times a day meeting with the dietitian and the nutritionist. Got started on the diabetes exchange lists. Got handed paper logs for intake, outtake, fluids, and so forth, and weight. Boy, do I remember that. Yes. And, and, I, and I started self-management. Uh, third day, they brought me an orange. I said, I can't have this. <laughs> you know, with, with my blood sugar still pretty variable. And that was actually my patient. Absolutely. One of my crazy yeah. friends, after seeing that, brought me like a little airline-sized bottle of vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, inject that into your orange. See how it goes. Yeah. So, 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 so they gave me... Uh, a glass syringe, which I became intimately familiar with, including how to sterilize it. Yep. Uh, the, the, the removable needles that you had to sharpen and re-sterilize so you didn't get a fish hook on it. Now, see, I, we, and I was diagnosed a couple years before you were. Um, maybe in Northern California they didn't have them yet, but I can't remember having to sterilize or deal with my needles. Those came in a little pack. I did have the glass syringes, however. Well, 
what can I tell you? I wish I, wish I would have known you then. I would have sent you some of mine. <laughs> okay. Listen, our time is growing short. And I hate to stop you talking about this, but I know you have so many other things to share with us, not the least of which is the incredible work that you do every day in getting the word out by virtue of being a Minimed ambassador. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that work that you do? Yeah, a Minimed ambassador is probably the 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 hallmark group that I participate in building diabetes awareness, especially of T1D and brittle T1D, which is the special kind I enjoy, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, about six years ago, my, my endocrinologist, who was a world-class diabetologist, CDE in a whole nine yards, as I mentioned in a phone conversation we had, um, we were trying everything. We were trying, he had me in a clinical trial for Simlin and all kinds of other stuff to try to bring down my HbA1c because I was watching my diet. I was taking um, eight to 10 shots a day because uh, the R and the NPH, even the human stuff, had to be in uh, separate pens or separate. The disposable syringes, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we couldn't get my HbA1c below eight, no matter how we tried. So then he suggested uh, going on an insulin pump. To make a long story short, by that time I was on Medicare. Medicare Advantage and Medicare only cover Medtronic, but that would turned out to be fine. Yes. <laughs> In less than two weeks. I had the approval with full documentation of medical necessity from my doc, from my the HMO branch of my uh, United Healthcare HMO Medicare Plus plan, um, and from uh, Medicare. And in less than two weeks, I received the pump, and I spent about a week on waiting for my training. Uh, just trying it out with a little bit of the saline to have you put in a reservoir just to get used to wearing a patch. And in less than six months, my HbA1c bottom line is went from over eight to my first uh, good HbA1c was 6.9 in that's, six months. That's phenomenal. That is no more no more six to eight shots a day. I change an infusion set. Every three days, yeah, yeah. And, and and so my my uh, stomach and thighs get a little rest. <laughs> Not to, my fingers don't. <laughs> I still test eight times a day. Uh, you're still a very nice man. <laughs> but but um, we have a great group of ambassadors. Uh, the Medtronic Ambassador Program is invitation only for users of the Medtronic. Uh, insulin pump, any model, any time, who uh, share information. We get no compensation. We occasionally do get uh, samples or previews or advanced notifications of things, Mm -hmm. sometimes under non-disclosure. But we also share tips and tricks that we've all been together through. And I'm also active in probably, I don't know, 25 or 30 uh, worldwide uh, peer support groups for type 1 diabetes, and especially brittle type 1. Well, John, we couldn't ask much more of you as a part of our community. We need more folks like you. And um, I'm just really happy that you and I have finally connected and that you had the time and the desire to be our co-host and uh, give us some some great information. So I'm going to ask you one more question. Mm-hmm. Um, in 46 years, I, I feel like I'm going to be Mel Brooks. What was the greatest invention? Saran wrap. No, but I'm not dead. But I'm not dead yet. <laughs> what of all of? the enhancements and all of the tools that we have seen come down the pike in our almost 50 years of the disease. What's the biggest, most important 
most valuable to you thing that's happened? Um, I can't name one, but I can name three. The insulin okay. pump. Mm-hmm. The insulin pump. And my doc said to be sure to mention what he's looking for coming down the pike and in development are the dual chamber um, insulin and glucagon closed system pumps. Um, I'd like to say CGM, but Medicare doesn't cover it yet. Uh, that's a lobbying hint. <laughs> uh, that 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 happens to be a road that I travel right now too. So I I, and, I, understand and, and I don't understand the policy behind it, but then again, <laughs> doesn't uh, mean I'm not it going. Is, to... It is the internet, social media and smart technology where I can have my intelligent diabetes logbook on my PC, on my phone, share the info with my doc, sync it with a secure online database, or share bits and pieces of it uh, with friends. Well, you're good. I couldn't do all of it. I, I just, it's hard. And enough. then my, my and spare right. time. <laughs> right, right. Well, John, it doesn't seem like to me you have very much spare time, and that's sort of the point, I guess. But um, I'd like to, actually, I'd love to have you on another time when we can talk the old days and what's, you know, because I hear people saying, you know, why should we put any more money and all of this, you know, into devices? Well, what else do we have? Okay. I mean, I have, since. When was it, I guess, 19, right around the time, not right around 1970, um, I was working at USC in the labs of Sam Bessman, who I'll talk about later. And even at that time, Dr. Bessman was working on all of the things that we're talking about now. So none of these ideas are brand spanking new. The deal is, it's one thing to conceive of it. It's another thing to implement it. And then we have to fight the next step, which is getting somebody to pay for it, other than the diabetics themselves. So Exactly. That's, that's my pitch on that. I don't know any other business where R&D is not a business expense other than in big pharma. We, the patients, are supposed to pay for their R&D. And we don't get a cut of the profit? What's that all about? Just saying. Yeah, I think all of, I think all of big pharma should follow the example of Drs. Banting and Best, who said when they started developing their first patent for insulin that it shouldn't be a profit center. Absolutely. It should be available to anyone, anywhere. Yeah, well. And they provided uh, tons of uh, the early samples all around the world yeah. to help people stay alive. Yeah. That, that was the thinking in Edmonton. Unfortunately, it does not uh, come down to the lower states. Anyway, John, I hate to end this interview but I have to move on. And I just want to also say that if any of you out there who are t- type 1s would like to sit in the type 1 co-host chair, John can attest to this. It's really very simple. Reach out to me. Let me know. And we do it. It's just that easy. So I, I highly recommend it. <laughs> I like your style. You take good care, John. And again, thank you very much for being my co-host today. It is my pleasure. Uh, Well, it is time for my soapbox. Um, I just mentioned this man's name, but I'd like to give a shout-out to a remarkable man named Dr. Samuel Bessman. Um, Dr. Bessman passed away, I believe, about 10 years ago at the age of 89. But before doing so, it was actually Dr. Bessman um, who was conducting the phase two clinical trials for FDA approval on an open loop implantable insulin pump. And that was in 1970. 
um, he patented m- numerous medical devices. Um, he is credited with the very first glucose sensor. Um, He also happened to be the first person to develop a successful treatment for lead poisoning. Dr. Bestman started out as a pediatrician in Baltimore. He was brought out to USC to the Keck School of Medicine, where he was the department head of pharmacology. I had the privilege of working in his laboratories Um, in 1973 and 74, working on those lead detection studies. And at the very same time, um, he was working on a project trying to ascertain what would be... Because he was thinking along the lines of encapsulated cells for transplantation. So everything from a piece of his wife's girdle, yeah, we had girdles in 1970, Um, everything he could imagine he would bring into the lab and we would test. Um, Not many people know that name. We know Banning and Best, but I had to give a shout out to Dr. Bestman. One of my favorite things I ever heard him say was while he was practicing pediatrics, a mom of a T1 called him, just freaked out, yelling, my son's sugar is 600. What do I do? What do I do? He said, when it gets to 700, sell. Well, that was Sam Bestman. He didn't get wrapped up in the numbers. He looked at a bigger picture. And um, so, Dr. Bestman, my thanks to you again and again and again. Now, my shout down, what can I say about Wells Fargo Bank that hasn't been said already. Um, I read a very interesting article in this past Sunday's LA Times written by um, business writer David Lazarus. And uh, his article was entitled, Wells Fargo Did Us a Favor. And I quote, on behalf of all consumers, allow me to express gratitude for your living down to our sadly low expectations for bankers. Without your attempt to fleece millions of customers with bogus accounts and the $185 million fine you just got slapped with and your cowardly move to blame your wayward employees. It's impossibly, it's entirely possible that the banking industry and conservative lawmakers would have succeeded in overturning financial reforms put in place after the last time banks screwed over the public. Well, I'm with Senator Warren on this, and um, I think that criminal charges should, in fact, be brought against Stumpf um, to not bring these charges, and I know that the DOJ has been, is in in talks, um, but I really believe that um, for them not to charge him criminally um, would be as almost as unconscionable as the act which he perpetrated. Um, however, if you have an opinion or uh, don't agree with me, or if you do agree with me, Go ahead and uh, visit my blog at bonnyshare.com backslash blog and sound off. Well, that's our show. I hope you'll return next week for another 50 minutes of a trip through the land of Bonnie, through the land of celebrities, through the land of baby boomers, and through the world of type 1 diabetics. A uh, note of thanks to Corey Bone of Crown and Anchor Jewelry for outfitting me with this lovely black onyx necklace hand wired with 14 karat gold. You can follow Corey on Twitter at Crown and Anchor Jewelry, or you can connect with him on my website, www.bonnyshare.com. Drop down to the bottom and you will see Corey Bone and Crown and Anchor Jewelry. To my friends, old and new, most of you probably know already that uh, I had a very special place in my heart for Sammy Davis Jr. He was my friend. He was my mentor. And I miss him every single day. 
Um, so if there are speakers up in heaven, well, then, Sammy, my friend, this one's for you. Take us out. Whether I'm right or whether I'm wrong Whether I find a place in this world or never belong I gotta be me I gotta be me What else can I be? I want to live, not merely survive, and I won't give up this dream of life that keeps me alive, I gotta be me. is waiting for me if I need the call I won't settle down won't settle for less as long as there's a chance that I can have it all I'll go it alone that's how it must be For somebody else If I'm not right for me I gotta be free I've gotta be free Daring to try to do it or die I've gotta be me I'll go it alone That's how it must be I can't be right for somebody else if I'm not right for